So the talk is going to be called How to Survive Your First Indie Game for Dummies, version 2.0. And um, I don't know, I, I'm going to assume that a lot of you have seen talks here. And a lot of talks are given by people who have done great work in their field. And as such, that most of the talks you listen to are about success and how to get success. Um, so I don't want to talk about success, I want to talk about failure. Uh, and I most specifically want to talk about uh, your failure. So here's the thing. If you're going to be starting an indie game studio or a creative company, uh, the large majority of creative companies or indie game studios do not even survive their first game. Uh, many don't survive their first year. And uh, if you're going to be starting a creative company or an indie games business, that very likely includes your indie game business or your indie game or your creative company. And to be honest, that could have also been true for my indie game company, but for a variety of reasons, some of which are in my control and many of which are not. Uh, my company wasn't a failure. So I, I do want to point out that doesn't mean that you should not try. It just means that you need to really understand if you're going to go into a creative business, chances are you're probably going to fail. Okay? Y'all good? Excited for the stock? Good. So let's talk about a good photo. Um, this is a photo I took. Pretty good photo. Uh, I'm happy with it. It has a uh, pretty good composition, good light, good subject. Uh, what's important to understand about this photo is that I'm not going to make photo. Uh, I'm not going to make money with this because it's not a great photo. Which, if I spent three more minutes on setting it up, you know, it could have been a great photo. Uh, but honestly, the the subject isn't that relevant, and. I'm not really promoting myself as a professional photographer. I just saw a pretty thing and I shot a photo. Right? That's all I did. So this photo is, uh, is much better. It's uh, made by somebody called Yudong Louis. Uh, and uh, it has a lovely composition, has good light. And I have to say, it's a great feeling of, of drama and tension, a great use of perspective in the foreground and the background. Uh, perfect light. Now here's the thing, Yidong is also not going to make money with this photo because they uploaded it with a Creative Commons license on a photo sharing website called 500 Pixels. So Yidong clearly likes photography a lot more than I do. They spend a lot of time perfecting and practicing their craft. They're also not going to make money. So who has ever seen this photo? Just raise your hand if you've seen this photo. So this is a photo made by somebody named Joe Rosenthal. And it is a photo taken at the planting of the US flag at Iwo Jima at the end of a major battle fought during World War II. And uh, it's a very special photo in many ways. It remains the only photo to win a Pulitzer Prize in the same year it was taken. That has never happened before that, and it has never happened again since. And as you might have uh, guessed from how many people recognized it. It is often presumed to be the most recognizable photo in the, all of the history of mankind. This is the photo that most people on Earth will recognize as having seen it before. So how much do you think Joe Rosenthal made with this photo? Guess? Somebody? Just shout a number. 500 bucks? Nothing. Nothing? It's a bit better than that. Um, he made uh, approximately, he guesses, $6,000, um, of which 4,200 were direct earnings, 1,000 were prize money, and uh, $700 were doing interviews about the photo. Now, I know a lot of people, when they hear this, they go, yes, but this was 1945 and inflation and stuff like that. So, okay. If you adjust for all of that, it's $132,400. Sounds a lot better, but when you think for a moment about the fact that this is the single most recognizable photo in the history of mankind, $130,000 isn't that much. In fact, if you were running a small studio or small creative business out of $132,000, you're trying to run it for a year, you can't have that many employees. So OK, there's bad news. Indie games is like photography. 
Creative business is like photography. More people today can do our job with the, tools they found, with the tools they find on the internet than ever before. If you've never made a game before, you can download Unity or Game Maker today. Tomorrow you can be making games. If you've never edited a video before, Movie Maker comes with Windows. And you can easily get a trial access to any movie editing program anywhere. Today, tens of thousands of people are making games. I spend a lot of time traveling around the world, getting to know people, making games in places that most people don't go to for the games industry. This week, I'm good. I was in Croatia. Today, I'm here. In two days, I'm going to be in Berlin. In four days, I'm going to be in Australia. And in six days, I'm going to be in San Francisco. And all I'm going to be doing is talking to people that make games. I've been to over 250 places around the world. And in all of those places, there were people competing with you. And to be honest, most of those people don't make money doing this, because they do it for fun, or they don't do a good enough job to make money, or the circumstances aren't good enough to make money. And for those that do earn money, most don't earn very much, or not enough to keep themselves going. Only very few make enough to do this, a creative job, as a living. Now, that might sound scary, and it might sound abnormal. It might sound like something has broken and there's no longer work in this industry. But the truth is, this is not abnormal. The truth is that you only hear about success. And because you only hear about success, creative industries sound easy. Because all you need to do is take a good photo, right? All you need to do is make a good game, make a good video, prepare a good installation. That's all you need to do. Because that's the story you read over and over. If people ask me how I became the developer I am, I would tell you that I dropped out of school. I would also tell you that that was a very bad idea, that you shouldn't do it. But if someone re-interviews me and they hear that sentence, they're just going to write down that. Right? They're just going to write down school dropout. When people talk about big hits in the games industry, they don't talk about the seven years that people spent making small games that were Honestly, shit. No, they talk about the one game that did well. So a lot of people say that over the years, now that game design, creative media, has become easier and easier, it has gotten worse. And honestly, I don't care whether it has gotten worse. It's not important whether it has gotten worse. What is important is that you if you are going to try and make a living in a creative industry, that you understand that this is hard, that this is not going to be easy.